This is an introductory lecture to pipe flows. Uh, it'll be a very short one. If you take a look at the screen here, you can see a some facility. I'm going to guess it's a chemical plant. Maybe it's a, a gas or oil facility. But the real point here is there are just a lot of pipes in this facility. Pipe flows have tremendous practical application. Just about any facility that manufactures anything is going to have uh, pipes in it. Um, you've got to get fluid from point A to point B, right? Liquids and gases have to go um, from one location to another. So these facilities are just chock full of pipes. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next several lectures is analyze pipe flow. So how do we predict how much pressure drop we have in a pipe flow? What kind of flow rates we're going to get? Um, what kind of requirements do we need from a pump to move fluid at a certain flow rate through a pipe system? So we're going to focus on that. Um, before we do that, let me just give you a few just general ideas about pipes. Um, <clears throat> we're going to focus specifically on fully developed pipe flow. So what I mean by that is imagine we have an incoming flow that's uniform and it starts to enter into a pipe given by these, these walls here. We'll, we know from our previous lectures that we'll get the formation of a boundary layer that forms on the pipe walls, right? So the gray regions here are the boundary layer. The region in the middle is the inviscid core region um, where the velocity remains essentially uniform. Uh, the speed actually increases as we go downstream here just so that we increase, that we have to have that speed increased in, in order to conserve mass. Since the flow is slowed down in the boundary layers, it has to speed up in the middle to conserve the, to keep the mass flow rate the same. So anyway, as we move downstream, the boundary layer grows and we, we know that. There's actually a pressure gradient as we move downstream because um, we're getting a change in momentum of the fluid, right? It's slower at the edges, faster in the middle. We're getting some momentum changes, so there's actually a pressure gradient that's occurring here. Eventually, these boundary layers merge, and the point where they merge is the point where we start to get fully developed flow. So as we go downstream from this region where they've merged and then continue downstream, the velocity profile will no longer really change. That's the fully developed flow region. We're familiar with that term from Navi Stokes equation solutions. So you can see here that you know you have some average profile, but once the boundary layers have merged, then the whole flow field is viscous and the velocity at the center line is larger than the average because it's had to increase in that inviscid core. Um, so, so we can't use Bernoulli's equation as you've been dealing with it once we have this fully developed flow because it's all viscous. And we know that Bernoulli's equation is only valid for inviscid flows. So we could use Bernoulli's equation from the inlet here all throughout the inviscid core, but once the boundary layers merge, then we can't use it anymore. This region where we're getting this kind of developing flow is called an entrance region. And people have made measurements of those entrance region lengths as a function of Reynolds number, and I give the correlations down here. So for a, a laminar flow coming into the pipe, the entrance region length made dimensionless by the pipe diameter um, is just like 0 0.06 times the Reynolds number based on the pipe diameter. And if it's a turbulent flow coming in, you have a different kind of relationship. It depends on the Reynolds number again, but raised to the 1 6 power. So for many engineering flows, I just kind of give a ballpark range of Reynolds numbers between 10,000 and 100,000. The entrance region length made dimensionless by the pipe diameter is between 20 and 30. So you have to go about 20 to 30 pipe diameters from the inlet before you get to the fully developed region. Our analysis with pipe flows is really going to focus on that fully developed flow region. And we won't worry about the entrance length. I just wanted to let you know that there really is an entrance length. It takes time for the flow to, to develop from that entrance region. You have the same sort of thing. If flow goes through a valve or around an elbow or something like that in a pipe flow, the flow gets perturbed a little bit. And it takes a little while for it to get back to a fully developed state. In our analyses, we're going to ignore that. Ignore that. In, a, in a real system, if you were really trying to get detailed pipe flow analyses and the pipes weren't terribly long, you'd have to factor in those entrance regions into account. If you're dealing with really long pipes, so the entrance region is only a small fraction of the overall pipe length, then you can ignore it. And if we're doing calculations by hand, like what we're going to be doing, we'll ignore those entrance regions. But I just wanted to let you know that they're really there. Um, the only other thing I want to say in this lecture is this little bit of trivia here. You know, pumping costs to basically pump fluid through pipes 
is somewhere between 16% and 40% of an industrial facility's energy usage. I mean, it's a lot. Pumping fluid through pipes actually takes quite a bit of energy. And you can see from this picture at the front here, I mean, there are a lot of pipes just in this one facility. So you can imagine the pumping costs are, are a pretty large fraction of the total energy uses, usage of that facility. So, so we need to understand how to model these pump uh, these pipe flows um, and what kinds of things affect the um, uh, you know the requirements that we need from pumps in order to get the fluid to move through the pipes uh, effectively. So that's what we're going to do over the next few lectures.